Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Northborough. If you haven't seen this show before, my name is Art Bergeron. My day job is as an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell up the street in Westboro. But this is not my, about my day job. This is about my friends, Frank and Mary. If you've seen any of my presentations, which ironically were often at the library, you'll never guess who our guest is today. Um, um, you know that their goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if that's in Northborough, that means right here. They never want to leave. And so the question is, who are the people they need to know? What are the programs they need to know about in order to basically live happily ever after right here in Northborough? So Liz Tridiak, um, who has been doing this show, we've been doing it almost a year since Liz, Liz since you arrived at the senior center, right? At like right. The, at COVID nineteen, you know, like day two or something, right? Day um, one. <laughs> day one. So we've been doing this for for quite a while now, and so she always finds these great guests in Northborough. And so Liz, whom do we have today? Today, Arthur, we have Jennifer Bruneau, who is our brand new library director. So welcome to the town, Jen, and welcome to the Frank and Mary show. Thank you, and thank you so much for having me. It's so, great to, yeah, it's just, the pandemic is so strange. It's, it's great to meet people, <laughs> even if it's, you know, through a camera. It's so great. Yeah, people, people are gonna come out of their houses, you know, in a couple more months, and it's like gonna be all these spaces that they only know from TV, right? <laughs> be like, wow. You, it's really you, you know, it's going to be great. Right? <laughs> We're not computer simulations. We actually exist. You actually exist. You actually exist. So, so how, Jen, did you, how did you find your way here? This is a, this is. Yeah. So um, for the last nine ish years, I've actually been working as the library director right over in Boylston. Um, so not too far away. Um, so when I saw that the job was open, um, I had been to the Northboro Library before. I always tell people it was my little secret getaway because Boylston, the library is beautiful, but it was very small. And, right. and because everybody's sort of on top of you, it's hard to get time to focus. So I actually used to sneak over to the Northboro Library to get work done. <laughs> um, so I knew how beautiful the library was. So when I saw the job came open, I knew I was going to apply for it. So, um, so yeah, I made the jump over. It's about five minutes longer on my commute. Um, and That's terrific. Yeah. Where are you commuting from? Connecticut. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it's about a 50 minute drive. Um, I just live just over the border in a little town called Pomfret. So I'd I say it's worth it. Yeah. I listen to a lot of audiobooks. <laughs> no way. <laughs> so, Jen, um, so actually, what, when was your first day? When did you start? Oh, time is such a funny thing right now. It was in December. I think it was early December, just after, um, just after Thanksgiving. So okay. I've been here for about, I want to say about two months. Two Three months. months. Wow. So have you been able to meet all of your staff, kind of get orientated there? Yeah, it's been certainly a different experience, um, getting to know staff and building relationships while social distancing and everybody's wearing a mask. Um, I'm not the greatest at remembering names, so I usually I remember faces. So with a mask, it was a little bit trickier. Um, but everybody's been so welcoming and helpful. Uh, so it's been, it's been really easy or as easy as it can be. So are folks all there? Are there, you know, when you say that there's social distancing, but they're actually there so that, so that people aren't just, you know, you're not, you're not just meeting them on zoom at this point. Right. right? right. Yep. We're spread out through the building and staggering our shifts, but we are here, um, been answering the phones and we have curbside pickup and virtual programs. So we're still super, super busy, um, even though the doors have been locked for a while. So you can't actually come into the library yet, but you can do the curbside pickup. Right, yep, we have um, curbside pickup six days a week. Um, there's some evenings and Saturday hours. Um, we're answering the phones, doing reference work, um, so if you have a question, you can call the library, you can still get things printed. Um, we still have tax forms. So everything is just sort of, you know, the same services, but everything is done 
through a table outside the front door. <laughs> so, go, sorry, go, Arthur, go you mentioned ahead. the virtual programming. What do you what are you doing virtually right now? So, in the children's room, they're doing all of their normal story times. Um, they're just all moved to Zoom, and they have some other fun. Um, programs for different uh, kids of different ages. The teens are still doing their teen advisory group. They have a couple of um, regular monthly programs that they're doing. The Northboro Job Seekers is um, the big adult programming that's for anybody who is actively looking for a job. And we know a lot of people have been laid off because of the pandemic and maybe have been, you know, out of the job seeking world for a long time. So that's a regular group um, that we need to kind of help people figure out and, and learn to navigate this very new sort of thing where you're looking for a job and everything is closed. And so you're doing a lot of it online and that can be tricky for a lot of people. Yeah. And, and are those programs themselves also like is no one's low? So no one's showing up at the library. These are right. all these these are totally Zoom based programs. Yep, we live on Zoom now. <laughs> We've gotten so much more comfortable with cameras than we ever thought we would be. <laughs> I was just going to say so. So from from that experience, do you find yourself you know now, now that we're getting dare I say it close to the end of this? You know, and and I'm feeling like you know of course it's always. <laughs> It's always about me, you know? So my wife and I got our first shot last Saturday, right? And we're scheduled for the second one, yeah, like, you know, in two more, yes. She in Worcester at nine o'clock, I in North Adams at 12. North Adams. And we got there two minutes before 12 for this, you know, going through these back things and GPS, oh my, yes. But you know, you do what you have to do right now, right? I mean, mm -hmm. people, there were a number of people there from New York. I didn't think they could do that, right? Because the New, York, New York's like kind of like the next town over is, yeah. is New York, is New York State, right? Mm -hmm. But anyway, you know, do, do you find yourself saying or, or thinking about how any of these experiences would, will get incorporated into the library experience, you know, post pandemic or, or even in the shorter run, how you imagine this world being where you've got some people have got, you know, shots. Other people don't have shots. How does that affect how the li how you think about the library? I'm just, I'm just curious. I mean, it's interesting. Among other things, it's just fun to be starting to talk about that world, you know. And it isn't totally gloom and doom, and or, or like, where am I going to get my shot? You know, it's like really starting to think about it again. It's great. I know it's so exciting to be able to think about returning to some kind of normalcy right. and in the library i think we we know it's going to take a while for everybody who wants to get vaccinated to to have a shot available to them so i think when we start to go back to normal it's going to end up being a hybrid of social distancing i think masks are probably here to stay for at least the short term um, we're probably going to i think programming in person events will be the last thing that really comes back um, and then when it does since we are so used to zoom and it is so available and we know how to use it i'm guessing that we're probably going to do a combination where people can come in or participate online mm -hmm. right. you know and we're looking at making some changes to the layout of the library just to open up the space to keep you know make it a little easier for people to do what they want to do inside the library and still maintain distance because it will probably be social distancing, I think, will be appropriate in a public mm -hmm. place for at least the short term. Right. 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 So if we weren't in the middle of a pandemic, Jen, what would you as a new new library director coming into a new place? What would be your goals or what would you be focusing on? What is it that you love to do in libraries? Yeah. So I, I, I got into this job because I love people. And I love helping people. Um, I uh, parenthetically, that that's like a theme among librarians. It seems your predecessor was like you always think of librarians as being like these really shy people, but it's the opposite. They're like right. they're really like really oh well, let me help you out and blah blah blah. It's really amazing, right? So, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. <laughs> no, it's very true though. I think the stereotype is funny because most of us are not like that. Most of us live for 
human interaction. And so it's been, it's been hard. Um, so if we were not in a pandemic, I would be out getting to know our patrons. I would be attending meetings for other groups in town. I would be touring some of the different facilities that we have in Northboro um, and just really starting to establish relationships with the, the town. Um, which is what I did in Boylston. And it takes a while to get to know everybody, but it's so rewarding. And there really is no substitute for those uh, human connections and relationships that you build. So I look forward to doing that as soon as possible. <laughs> and in the meantime, I'm having a lot of Zoom, Zoom meetings and uh, Zoom introductions. <laughs> yes, like a lot. A lot. <laughs> So if people are trying to connect with you now, and you know, obviously you've, you've already been servicing many people, right? But if people haven't, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of what do they do? Because you, you said there's, 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 there's stuff on, there's, there's curbside. Mm -hmm. So can they, can they like basically, um, can they access like the library, the, the stacks, the virtual stacks and stuff to kind of know what, what to get? And then how do they, how do they do that? If you're actually using the library, what do you, how do they do that? Yeah, so browsing our collection is probably the hardest thing for people to replicate when the doors are not open. Um, mm -hmm. We do have our catalog, which you can search through and you can find not only everything that we own, but everything in our CW Mars network, which is 100 and it's very close to 150 libraries across the state. Um, and we can have everything delivered here, but that doesn't necessarily give you that that feel of the book. It's not quite the same as browsing. Um, we do have, if you look at our website, we do have something called Wowberry, which gives you all of our newest editions. So it has the cover art, which kind of helps replicate that browsing experience. Um, and for all different age groups, we also have some version of a mystery shopping program. So if you like the sort of serendipity of a new author and, and something discovering something that you may not have picked yourself. Um, you can request to have somebody pull some materials for you. It doesn't have to be books. We do DVDs, music, audio books. We have a, a library of things with games and things like that. So you can request that. Um, all that information is on our website or you can call us and we'll pick something out and put it in a bag and then you kind of get the surprise of of opening up and seeing what's in there that's fun so if people don't have internet they can just call you and kind of replicate the same process get a recommendation or um discover something new yep oh yeah you can you can definitely just call um and request something and give us you know we usually just go through a little bit of what you like to read or what you don't like um, and then we kind of process all that and pick out some things that we think that person would love based on their interests. You, you know, isn't it funny? Now, once again, that this is another stereotype. That, you know, I would never have thought to do that at the library. You do that at a bookstore, you know, you're going, because of course I read, my wife and I, we both read quite a bit, you know, but you know, you know what you know, right? You have no idea what you don't know and who these, and there are always these great new authors, right? But to actually think that, of course, the folks at the library would probably know, right? Yeah. Because they're probably going to be, you know, cruising around and reading some of this stuff, right? It's a little known secret that it's it's pretty much our favorite thing to do. When somebody says, I need something new to read, what can you recommend? That reader's advisory component to it is really just, it's so fun for us because we do tend to read a lot. And we know a lot about the collection. So when somebody just comes in and says, you know, what do you got for me? That's, it makes our day. <laughs> right. Or kind of like, I like the, I've liked these people. Where do I, where do I go from here? You know, it's kind of like the classic Pandora question, you know, where you, you get somebody's radio and all of a sudden you're listening to this great person that you've never heard of. Mm -hmm. Right. And you go, wow, that's really good. You know, it's like, how did, how did that lady in there know that? How did Pandora know that? Right. <laughs> That's great. And you said you loan out um, audiobooks and CDs and DVDs. Is there anything else? I know some libraries loan out um, all kinds of different electronics and equipment. Does the Northboro Library have stuff like that? We do. Um, so we have what's called the Library of Things. Um, 
we have there's musical instruments there's different board games we have um wireless they're mobile hotspots so if you find that your household suddenly needs more internet capacity because everybody's on zoom um all the time <laughs> mm -hmm. then you can you can request to borrow a hotspot um and it provides its own internet signal so you can kind of go somewhere quiet and and boost the signal strength and and use that so people have found that really helpful through the pandemic mm -hmm. uh, and we have cool. a telescope and there's some other like there's some other great things on there is is that a new phenomenon this the internet of things i've heard that term before right or not the internet but just the library of things you know yeah. Yep, it started, um, I want to say the trend started a couple of years ago, um, and it's really taken off in libraries. So there are libraries that have um, artwork that you can take home and borrow for a certain amount of time that you can actually just hang on your wall, and then you bring it back and you can change it up. <laughs> um, there's some libraries that have cake pans and um, power tools. There's one library that I know of that lends bicycles. Um, so it's really expanded the concept of, of borrowing and, and that community connection that people are looking for. That's really neat. <laughs> Fun. <laughs> so now the, the, I, I'm curious now you've been there a couple of months, right? And obviously you liked the North Pearl library cause you used, you, you were at one of those hidden users, right? That, that, that you know. <laughs> Fortunately, you didn't have to show your North Row ID in order to get in or anything. You know? <laughs> but 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 now, as you're looking at that, how, how, do you imagine it changing, or how do you imagine it? How do you imagine it growing and changing and stuff? Just just curious. Um, the space inside the library. I don't I don't know. Just kind of in in general, if you're going to be there, what what do you think would be in terms of programs, in terms of space? What you know? What do you what do you think? I think people will be looking to reconnect with their neighbors once the pandemic is done um, and, and it's safe to kind of move around and interact with other households. So I see a lot more of the community connections. So whether it's more in-person programming, um, I think some of the things that we're looking at is updating our technology so that kids who might have experienced a loss of uh, learning through virtual you know, the virtual cohort. Oh, yeah. And I know the schools are working as hard as they possibly can, but um, some kids might be looking for, you know, a little bit of extra help. So we're looking at some programs that are designed to boost the literacy. Um, yeah, we're, we're in the process of working on a new strategic plan, which includes some redesigns of the space, um, really to just amplify and, you know, allow for more opportunities for people to connect with one another. So whether it's groups, you know, a writing group or a book club or something like that, um, or just giving people the space to meet with their neighbors or other like-minded people on their own. Well, that sounds great. That sounds really great. Yeah. Now, now, so, so my job on this show actually, as I always uh, tell people is to, to provide comic relief, but also keep track of the time. And I'm looking at the clock. And I know we're getting, we're getting a little bit close, and I just want to make sure, Liz. You know, one of the things that one of the things we try to do in the show is also provide the opportunity to let seniors know if kind of what's going on. You know, what's going on at the senior center because you know they kind of want to know. So, can you want to want to take a couple minutes and just talk about what's going on? Sure. Um, so, I just had all kinds of great ideas, Jen, when you were talking about library of things. And I think we need to get together and write some grants because wouldn't it be cool to do a library of snowshoes or something like that <laughs> where we could <laughs> combine it with something out here at the senior center. Yeah. But anyways, here at the senior center, we're helping folks sign up for COVID-19 vaccines. You can call us here at the senior center, 508-393-5035. Um, in March coming up, because we're at the end of February right now, we have a corned beef and cabbage dinner that will be free, catered by sirloins here in town. Um, that will be, I believe, on Wednesday the 17th. But check your um, Northborough Times newsletter for the um, correct information on that. And we also have a brand new program um, 
from a music therapist who lives close by here in Worcester. Her name is Kara Brindisi. We have her, um, her video playing on cable right now and it's on YouTube. She is fantastic. She's a gem and I can't wait for this program. She's so good. You're going to love it. So check that out. And then call us for any other questions, anything outreach tax related. We're still doing tax appointments into April. So give us a call. So this was a wonderful, a wonderful, you know, introduction to, to you and once again to the library. So thank you so much for doing this. We really, really appreciate it. Thank, thank you, Liz, for finding these great people all the time. You consistently do this, right? Oh, so folks, we hope you enjoyed this. The key to this is it's like everybody I meet in North Bro, they're always smiling, just like these two people are always like smiling. It's the most amazing thing. So, you know, you're they're working for you. They want to help you right now. You know, you're stuck at ha in the house. Nobody's happy about this, right? But if you got any questions, give, you know, give Liz a call. We'll find out what's going on. If you're interested, they've actually got people who want to know what you want to read so they can figure out, so they can get it to you. Mm -hmm. How cool is that? So call the library, right? And, and once again, we're just doing this a day at a time. So stay safe, right? Don't do any crazy things. This is almost over. This is very exciting. Thank you very much. And thank you for watching. And we'll look forward to seeing you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Northboro. Thank you very much. Thanks, Arthur. Thanks, Jen. Thank you.